Srimad Bhagavatam 131 Chapter 3 is entitled Krishna is the source of all incarnations Sutta Vacha Jagruhe Paurusham Rupam Bhagavan Mahadadibhi Sambhutam Shoda Shakalam Adav Lokas is Rukshaya Jagruhe Paurusham Rupam that in this chapter the different incarnations of the Lord are talked about and the transcendence of the Lord while being, while his, being involved in this world in terms of its maintenance and keeping it on the path of purification both are talked about by discussion of his incarnations so Jagruhe he accepted Paurusham Rupam the Purusha Avataras, Bhagavan Mahadadibhi, the Supreme Lord Bhagavan he, Mahadadibhi, the Mahatattva and other ungreed, the Adibhi. This is a common mm, mode of reference in the Vedic scriptures where if certain items are known, are well known to be a set, then just one is mentioned and etc. as we say in English, Adi Bhi. So the others are understood. So in the previous chapter, for example, Siti was mentioned. Siti Adi Bhi. So Sushti, Siti, Pralaya, that is to be understood. Similarly, here, Mahad Adi Bhi. So Mahad and the other material elements, mm -hmm. the ingredients of material existence, which are there, Mahad and Adi Bhi. Sambhutam, Shodash, Kalam. Kalam, Sambhutam. The creation took place, Shodasha Kalam, the 16 primary principles. Adav Loka Sisrukshaya. For the purpose of creating the Lokas. So it is said over here that in the beginning, the Lord accepted as um, the Purusha Rupa. He manifested himself as the first, first Purusha Avatar. And then. He manifested all the ingredients for material existence. Bhagavan Mahada Divi. Now among those material elements you require, the first what was manifested was the Shodasha Kalam, the 16 principles of material action. So in Sankhya there are various more various frames of analysis. Sankhya is related to the word Sankhya. Sankhya means to count. Sankhya is the analysis, the word very, very well analysis means uh, dividing into components, you know, something is very big, we cut it down, break it down into its components and thus we have to understand what it is made up of, how it functions, how it is all brought together, we try to understand all this. So Shodasha Kalam, this means that the 16 elements of uh, which eventually give rise to material existence, they are talked about. So you, now usually there are uh, there are different ways to talk. So for example, the Bhagavad Gita talks about the 24 elements. It's talked about in 13.6 and 7. Mahabhutan yankaro buddhira vyattam ekacha evacha indriyana dashaikam cha pancha chendriya gocharaha So Mahabhutani, the fire gigantic elements, earth, water, fire, ether, then ahankaro buddhira avyakta mevacha, ahankara is ego, buddhi is intelligence, avyakta is unmanifest, that is pradhan, indriyan, the shaykam, the eleven senses, which include the five working senses, the five knowledge acquiring senses and the mind, panchachendriya gocharaha, and then there are the five gocharaha, indriya gocharaha, that refers to the sense objects. So, 5 plus 3 plus 11 plus 5 so <clears throat> we have 24 like that 5 plus 4 actually Mahabhutani Ahankaro Buddhira Vyakta Vyavacha Indriyana Shai Kamcha Pancha Chendriya Gocharaha so here out of those 24 elements instead of those 24 elements 16 are talked about and Prabhupada explains in the purport which 16 are being referred to, he says, they are the 11 senses, the working senses and the five gross elements. So Mahabhutani and Indriyani the Shaikamcha. 
So depending on the mode of between the frame of analysis, sometimes all the elements may be talked about, sometimes some elements may be referred to because those are the primary ingredients. So here the unfolding of creation is being described and it begins thus. Yasyambhasi shayanasya yoga nidram vitanvataha nabhiradam bujad asid brahma vishwa sujampatihi sujampatihi yasyambhasi shayanasya yasyambhasi shayanasya so ambha ambhasi means water so when this first purusha avatar is lying down in the ocean ambhasi shayanasya yoga nidram vitanvataha he is reclining in yoga nidra at that time nabhi radam bujad asid nabhi rada so his navel this is a this is a huge form and his within his huge form his navel is itself like a lake so nabhi rad ambuja asid ambuja ambu is water ja is that which is born so born in water refers to lotus ambuja so nabhi radambuja asid from the nabhi appears the lotus flower the primeval lotus flower and from there what happens brahma vishwasujam patihi brahma appears as vishwasujam who is the creation creator of the world patihi he is the master so In the, in the process of creation, there has to be some, there is Sarga and there is Visarga. If we look at the, later we will see in the second, towards the end of the second canto of Bhagavatam, there are Atra Sarga or Visarga described. Sarga is in one sense the creation of the material elements and then Visarga is, there are different, again, ways in which these are analyzed at different places. But broadly speaking, we would say the elements are created and then the living beings are manifested with the presence of the elements. It's like there is a cook and there are ingredients and then after that the cook uses the ingredients to make the recipe or there is a there is a land and then there is a gardener who uses the land and the land contains some seeds and the gardener uses the land and the seeds and whatever resources are needed to create a garden over there so the after the first material elements are man, first basic elements are manifested then this was that was mentioned in the previous verse in this verse, the manifestation of Brahmaji is described and Vishwa Sujampati, he, he is the master who will create the whole world, he will create the universe. This means he will ensure the universe will become populated and will become, uh, become um, instrument, will fulfill its purpose of offering an arena for both gratification and purification. Text three. Yesya vaya samsthane kalpito loka vistraha tadvai bhagvato rupam vishuddham sattam urjitam. So yesya vaya samsthane. So yesya vaya in his bodily manifest expansion samsthane they are situated. Kalpito loka vistraha kalpito. It is kal kalpana means imagination. So it is imagined, it is conceived. Loka vistaro. The, uh, the various lokas, the various plant systems, they are in his asya avayo. They are his, in his bodily expansion. They are situated. Tadvai bhagvato rupam. That form of the Lord. Now, beyond that, vishuddham sattva murjitam. But the actual form of the Lord, Bhagavata Rupam, is Vishuddham Sattam Urjitam. It is transcendental, it is Vishuddham, it is completely pure. That existence is completely transcendental. Urjitam, it is excellent. So, two points are being said over here. That The first verse is that it is conceived, it is imagined, it is thought that the various planetary systems are situated in the body of the Lord. But the Lord's body is completely transcendental. So this point of, so are the two talking about the same thing? No. 
द विराट रूप इज अ कंसेप्चुअलाइजेशन कल्पितो सो इट्स नॉट दैट देर इज एनी पर्टिकुलर विराट रूप लोका वेर द लॉर्ड विथ वेर द फॉर्म ऑफ द विराट रूप एज वील डिस्कस स्पेशली इन द सेकेंड कैंटो the 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 sun and the moon are the eyes, or the lower planetary systems are the thighs and the knees and the ankles and the calves and the feet like that. There is no form like that. It is a conceptualization, and especially that conceptualization is meant for people who are too much in the material conception of life to help those people to at least get a preliminary understanding of God's greatness in terms of material greatness. and gradually from that understanding they will rise towards the understanding of spiritual greatness which does not have to depend on dimension it depends primarily on the intensity of affection so the bhagavata roopa is transcendental so while describing the crea- unfolding of creation the bhagavata makes it clear that although the lord oversees the creation he himself does not have a material form पश्यूप्रचक्षुषा सहस्रपादुजनाभुत सहस्रमोदश्रवणाक्षिनाशिक सहस्रमौल्यंबरकुंडलोलसुंडलोलसत् सो पश्यो दिवोटी स्पिरिचुअली रियलाइज सोल pashyanti they see what do you see ah uh, pashyanti ado roopa madabra chakshusham chakshusha so in this form ado roopam the form of roopa is adabra chakshusha the, the perfect form with chakshusha sahas with, with many many eyes sahasra pado ru there are thousands of legs there are th- uru is thighs भुज आनन इज हैंड्स एंड फेस अद्भुतम इट्स ऑल वंडरफुल सहस्र मूर्ध श्रवणाक्ष नासिकम देन देर आर थाउजेंड्स ऑफ फेसेस एंड इयर्स एंड नोज नाइज सहस्र मौल्य देन देर इज सो मेनी गार्लेंड्स थाउजेंड्स ऑफ गार्लेंड्स एंड देर आर ड्रेसेज एंड कुंडलोल्लसाद एंड ऑल एंड देर इयर विच आर ऑल ग्लोइंग सो हियर the magnificent form of the supreme is talked about so now the lord manifests in various ways and in this verse the sahasra shirsha purusha just talked about in the purush sukta prayers the purush sukta prayers are offered to manifestation of the lord who is all glorious who is all opulent and that manifestation is being talked about here so now which particular manifestations is referring to if we consider in the sequence of the manifestation of the creation there is mahavishnu there is garbhodaksha vishnu and there is shirodaksha vishnu so the bhagavatam here is not giving an analytical step by step description using the framework of the three purusha avatars scripture in different places and the acharyas also in different places may use different schema for analysis and for example we may see that chaitanya that bhakti and thakur and chaitanya shikshamrut talks about the four levels at which people approach god Now, the fear, desire, duty, and love. And in contrast, Krishna talks about the four motives with which people approach God: the distress, the desire of wealth, the inquisitive, and the knowledgeable. So now, these are two different schemas of reference. So the, the, these four are motives that which motives with which people approach God. Krishna is talking about them, and what the what the bhakti thakur talks about is four levels at which people approach now we can bring about some con- some intersection and we can say that 
oh those who are distressed or those who are desires of wealth they are approaching at the level of desire uh, now yeah, that's true but where do we put the inquisitive and the knowledgeable uh, they are not necessarily approaching out of love and they, they may not be exactly inquisitiveness is not exactly a duty although we can say from a spiritual perspective philosophical perspective that it's our it's duty in the human form to inquire but it's not duty in a in the sense in which it is normally understood so we all need to recognize that there are different schema and trying to specifically pinpoint which uh, which particular form is being referred to in which verse we can do that based on the guidance of the acharyas but we need to understand the underlying principles the Bhagavatam, where as long as it does not use a particular name to refer to a particular form, so we may find that sometimes different the descriptions of different form or one form may seem to have different features. That's what it may seem like to us. So the first verse, if he is lying down in the ocean, we might say, is this referring to Mahavishnu? He also lies down in the ocean. Is it referring to Karana Daksha Vishnu? Garvodaksha Vishnu, he also lies down in the ocean, within the, in the Garvodaksha So, the, or is it a Fushya Daksha Vishnu? He also lies down in the ocean, but not at the bottom of the universe, at the top of the universe, in the Kshira Sagar. So, if we see from, we then just that from him Brahma is born. Then we can understand from who, which Vishnu Brahma is born, then the Garvodaksha Vishnu. So, this refers to the Garvodaksha Vishnu. So, now as far as him having, is it the same? So, that was what was referred to two verses earlier. Now, is this also referring to the same? Yes, we could say he is, and as far as his having thousands of forms, thousands of hands and legs, that is a vision which a devotee can relish in meditation and is perfectly compatible with with the Lord's omnipotence in being able to manifest anything and everything. So fifth text, Etan nana taranam nidhanam bijam avayam yasyam amshena sujyante devati jnana radayaha Etan, that same Lord who manifests in this universe and who sustains the universe, nana avataranam. So through various avatars, through various descents, that Lord, what does he do? Nidhanam Bijam Avayam He who is the indestructible source and seed of all of existence. Nidhanam Bijam Avayam Isyam Sham Shena Sujjante Whose plenary portion and part of plenary is Am Sham Shena Sujjante Through expansions and further expansions of expansions Sujyante so, are created or manifest. Devatiryan Naradayaha. Devatiryan Naradayaha. So, anim so devtas, animals, and humans, all of them. Adayaha means others also. So, that means all living beings are manifest through him. This verse is talking about two things now. First is that this. Purusha, Sahasrashi, this Purusha with Sahasrashi Yesha, from him, Prabhupada identifies this as the second manifestation of the Purusha. So, in particular visions, the Garbhodaksha Vishnu may also reveal many, many heads and many, many legs. So, from this manifestation, firstly, there are the avatars that come. And secondly, there are the various living beings that are manifested. So here the principle is not, a, the point here is not a technical analysis of precise sequence of manifestations. Where the per point is the principle that the Lord is the source of everything. We could say that yes, from Garbha Daksha Vishnu, there is Shiva Daksha Vishnu and the avatars come from Shiva Daksha Vishnu and even the living beings come from Shiva Daksha Vishnu. Yes, that would be true at one level, no doubt. But the important thing is, 
the Rimishiva Daksha Vishnu comes from Garbo Daksha Vishnu and therefore we could very well say that it is the Garbo Daksha Vishnu which is the source and because we are talking about the frame of one universe right now we talk about how Brahma is the creator of Brahma the creator of the universe is created here so in that sense things are moving onwards mm. with the frame of one, one universe and how the emanations happen within that universe so therefore we could say that this refers to Garbho Dakshaya Vishnu. So, six texts. Sa eva prathamam devaha Kaumaram sargam ashritaha Chachar duscharam brahma Brahmacharyam akhanditam So, now from this verse onwards, the six first six verses talked about how the Purusha avatar sustains the various uh, manifestations within the material existence originates and sustains the various manifestations in material existence and now from here onwards how that purusha avatar moves onwards and is the source of various incarnations is talked about so eva prathamam devaha so among the first manifestations of the lord that appears devaha from that Supreme Lord, Kaumaram Sargamashritaha Kaumara. The word Kumara can be both a common noun and a proper noun. A common, common noun, Kumara can be that means. It is different any any young boy who is in the stage of Kaumara. So it's roughly between up to, between the ages of five, around the age of five, little more, little less. As so Bal Avastha, Kumara Avastha, Yava Avastha, we can say. Pauganda Avastha can also be there. It depends on different modes of classification. So usually from the age of five onwards it is said Kumara Avastha starts. It's probably till the age of ten. Now so here it is said that the Kumaras can Kumara can refer to anybody who is in the Kumara Avastha, anybody between the age of 5 or 10. It can also refer to specific people who are known as Kumaras. And these people are the four Kumaras. So usually in the Kumara stage, one is considered to be one is expected to be unmarried, one is a brahmachari at that time. So, Kaumaram Sargamashritaha. Sargamashritaha. At the time of creation, right in the beginning of creation, among the first, previously it was described how Brahma was created and Brahma Viswasujampati, he, he created the universe. So, here the first beings that manifested after he appeared were the Kumaras, Chichar. Chachar Dusharam Brahma Chachar Dusharam They perform that which is very difficult to perform Brahma <coughs> Brahmacharyam Akhanditam So Brahma So Brahma Brahmacharyam Akhanditam So the word Brahma comes twice Brahmacharyam Akhanditam refers to their practice of uninterrupted celibacy and Brahma refers to mm, the the fact of, of spiritual truth of ultimate reality it doesn't refer here to brahma their father it refers to brahman the absolute truth so for attaining the absolute truth they performed austerity the kumaras <coughs> using this particular framework this chapter as a reference and of course other sources Rupa Gos, uh, the goswamis have analyzed in the mm, the various incarnations and they are considered to be the first incarnations of the Supreme. Now in a broad sense this first, second, third is not necessarily in, a, in an absolutely linear sense in the sense that within one day of Brahma depending on the rough timing when these particular people appear they can be called as first second third fourth at the same time we need to understand these avatars keep appearing and within the bhagavatam 
sometimes one avatar may be described earlier another a later avatar may be described earlier and earlier avatar may be described later and the reason for this may well be that the bhagavatam is not restricted to one kalpa so although the bhagavatam that's the point is that all the bhagavatam uses first second third fourth fifth this is not necess- in any sense the sequence is not indicative of primacy it is not the first is the most important or the last is the most important it is just indicating in a rough chronological sense within a day of brahma with the manifestation how the avatars appear and this is a broad listing that is given so the point is not a chronologically or or any other way systematically linear analysis the point is uh, a, a number of examples are given to broadly illustrate the principle that the lord appears time and time again to reclaim the living beings who are lost in material existence so seventh text dvitiyam tu bhavaya bhava yasya rasatal gatam mahim udharishyan upadatta yagyesha saukaram vapuhu dvitiyam second is who oh, saukaram vapuhu saukaram vapuhu refers to the boar incarnation the boar calls in the lord boar so normally boar if you say somebody say you are a boar Yeah, I'm a pig. You consider it a big offense. So nobody would consider juxtaposing the two words "lord" and "boar" together. But it's done over here to illustrate the point that uh, to convey that even when the lord appears in a form which might not at all seem very attractive or respectable, still the lord remains supremely attractive and supremely respectable. So Karam Bapu, who he took on the form of a boar, to Bhava Yasya. So bhavaya asya, bhava means uh, bhavaya means for the welfare of asya means of this earth. The rasatal gatam mahim mahim when the earth uh, earth had rasatal gatam had fallen down to the level of rasatal, udharishan upadat, udharishan he lifted it up upadat and established it in its proper position. Yagyesha. Yagyesh, ha! He is the Isha of Yagyas. So Karamba Puhu, he manif- who manifested in a so Kara form. So this story will be further illustrated in later parts of the Bhagavatam. Essentially, when the Earth had become Earth's balance had got destabilized because of Hiranyaksha exploiting too much gold from it, then the Earth fell from its present situation. down to a lower position and that lower position to which the earth fell is conveyed here in through the metaphor through the example through the not the metaphor through the through the uh, through the earth deliverance was done through the manifestation of the lord in the saukara rupa this is a We may dig underground for something to eat, or may search some thing by burrowing underground. So the Lord manifested in a boar form to go underwater, and the earth just fallen to the rasatan level. He, he actually the Lord, the earth has fallen down. He picked it up. Udharishan, he delivered it. Trithiyam rushi saragam vahi. देवर्षित्वम उपेत्य सह तंत्रम सात्वतम आचष्ट नैष्कर्म्यम कर्मणाम्य तृतीय ऋषि सर्ग वै सो थर्ड द इनकारेशन मैनिफेस्टेड इन द मिलेनियम ऑफ द ऋषि ऋषि सर्ग वै देवर्षित्व उपेत्य सह देवर्षित्व नारद मुनि नोन एज यूजली देव ऋषि ही इज Rishi among the gods, he sometimes descends to the earth also, and we know about him most of the time when he has descended to the earth. But he still is a, cel- a being of the celestial order, a Dev Rishi. So, Tantram Satvatam Achishta Tantra. Tantra is one genre of literature, especially Bhakti literature, which talks about the rituals of worshiping the Lord, especially duty worship. Tantram Satvatam Achishta. Satvata Tantra means that Tantra which is in the mode of goodness. So what happens to that? Nishkarmyam karmanamya taha. 
Naishkarmyam karmanam yatha. So how one can work without becoming bound? That is what this particular manifestation of the Lord taught. It is interesting. Narad Muni is a teacher usually of bhakti. Wherever he goes, he delivers people by his purity, by his potency and by his words of wisdom. He inspires them to practice bhakti. So that reference to bhakti is given indirectly by referring to Tantram Satotam. Satva Tantra is the name of a book also. But Satva Tantra can also be Satvata if you consider them as referring to devotee. Tantra is referring to the literature. Satva Tantra means he, he Navino Narabhu compiled the Narad Bhakti Sutra. And there are others also who compile, uh, others also compile Bhakti Sutra, like Shandilya Bhakti Sutra is also there. But the point is Narada is himself an exemplar of bhakti, he is a preacher of bhakti who has inspired many many other people also to take a bhakti and he is also the giver of bhakti to everyone including by bringing the by himself manifesting by carrying the Lord within his heart and by as manifesting the Lord in this world he actually brings the world and its inhabitants close to the Supreme Lord such is the purpose for which the Lord descends into this world and till now we discussed about how he manifests the various purushas and then he manifests the he manifests the he manifests in various ways as the kumaras as the boar and as narada to deliver the world which other incarnations he manifests in and what all he does in those incarnations we'll discuss in a few